Fellow Americans, we need to face a hard truth. Remember those uneasy feelings we had about our economy? Well, it turns out we were right. Our current economic situation, believe it or not, might be worse than what our ancestors faced during the Great Depression. That's a bold statement, I know. But let's look at the facts. Think about how much of your paycheck goes into buying a car, a house, or even just covering your grocery bills. It's a lot, right? Well, the numbers are in, and they're alarming. It's actually more expensive now than it was in the Great Depression. Yes, you heard that right. The cost of living has skyrocketed to the point where the average American is spending a larger portion of their income on basic necessities than they did nearly a century ago. Now, some economists are brushing this off, saying we're misinterpreting the data. But how can we ignore what's right in front of us? Cars, for instance, cost more now. A house costs more. And it's not just a small increase. We're talking about a significant chunk of your annual income. Back then, a house might have cost about five times your yearly wage. Now, it could be as much as eight times. That's not just a slight uptick, it's a steep climb. And it's not just about big purchases. Day-to-day -day expenses are hitting us hard, too. Food prices have gone up. But what's left for them to claim has increased in cost from the past. It seems like they're running out of excuses. The question we need to ask ourselves is, what are these economists talking about when they say it's not worse? If the cost of living essentials like cars, houses, and food hasn't gone up since the Great Depression, then what has? It's a puzzle with pieces that just don't seem to fit. We're diving into the statistics here, and the picture they paint is not a pretty one. It's a reality check that we all need to face. Our economy is in a state that demands our attention and action. The evidence is clear. And it's time we start asking the hard questions and demanding real answers. 1. Misleading economic reports. We need to talk seriously about the economic narrative that's being presented to us. It's time to peel back the layers of this optimistic economic reporting and face the hard truths. How can we reconcile the reports of rising job numbers and falling inflation with the financial struggles we encounter every day? It just doesn't add up. Remember the methods used for calculating inflation back in the 70s and 80s? They've changed, and not for the better. The way inflation is calculated now seems to conveniently mask the real rate. Some experts are boldly stating that if we use the old methods, our current inflation rate would be around 10%. That's a far cry from the 3% being officially reported. Can you see the discrepancy here? It's not just a small error, it's a massive gap that affects every aspect of our lives. But why does this matter to you and me? Because this new math and overly optimistic reporting are not just numbers on a page. They have real-world consequences. They're designed to make us question our own experiences with the economy. It's as if they're saying, The economy is fine, you're the problem. But how can that be true when so many of us are struggling to make ends meet? Think about it. If inflation is truly as low as they say, why are our daily expenses, groceries, gas, healthcare skyrocketing? Why does it feel like our paychecks are stretched thinner than ever before? This isn't just a matter of perception. It's the reality that millions of Americans are living every day. And let's not forget the credit crisis. More and more people are falling behind on their credit card bills. This isn't a small issue. It's a trend that's expected to worsen in 2024. What does this say about the state of our economy? If things were as rosy as some economists claim, why are so many Americans relying on credit cards for basic necessities? The truth is, there's a growing disconnect between the economic reports and our everyday experiences. It's time we demand more transparency and accuracy in how our economic health is measured and reported. We can't afford to be misled any longer. The well-being of our families, our communities, and our nation depends on it. Let's start asking the tough questions and holding those in power accountable for the true state of our economy. 2. The credit crisis and living paycheck to paycheck. Fellow Americans, we need to face a harsh reality that's unfolding right before our eyes. The credit crisis we're currently experiencing isn't just a minor bump in the road, it's a significant and growing problem. More and more of us are falling behind on our credit card bills. This isn't just a handful of people. It's becoming a widespread issue. The projections for 2024 are even more alarming. Think about it. If things are this tough now, what does that mean for our financial future? Let's delve into some hard facts. 
Did you know that a staggering 62% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck? This isn't just a statistic. It's a reflection of the daily struggles that many of us face. The economic divide is not just a topic for political debates. It's a reality that's impacting our communities, our neighbors, and perhaps even our own families. The situation is even more pressing when you consider the state of credit card debt. It's not just about a few late payments here and there. We're talking about a significant portion of the population that's relying on credit cards for basic necessities. This isn't about splurging on luxuries. It's about making ends meet. And what's even more concerning is that many are still carrying debt from the previous holiday season. This isn't just a cycle of debt. It's a trap that's getting harder to escape from. But it's not just about credit card debt. The economic challenges we face are multifaceted. For instance, the issue of homelessness is on the rise, and it's happening at the fastest pace ever recorded. This isn't something we can turn a blind eye to. It's happening in our cities, in our towns. It's a crisis that's unfolding right in our backyards. And let's talk about food insecurity. The number of people who are struggling to put food on the table is growing rapidly. This isn't just an issue in far-off lands. It's a problem here at home. Have you seen the lines at food banks? They're getting longer. And now, more than ever, they include a diverse cross-section of our society, including the elderly who can't afford to live on their retirement savings. Now consider this. While all this is happening, there's a report that 90% of shoppers plan to overspend this holiday season. Why do you think that is? Is it because people are suddenly feeling more affluent? Or is it more likely that they don't have the money and are resorting to charging their credit cards once again? This isn't just a matter of poor financial planning, it's a sign of desperation. We need to understand the gravity of the situation. The bottom of our economic food chain is collapsing. This isn't just about numbers and statistics. It's about real people facing real hardships. The question we need to ask ourselves is, what are we going to do about it? How do we navigate this crisis that's affecting so many of us? 3. The Illusion of Wealth You've probably heard reports suggesting that we're sitting on a mountain of wealth, right? They say the average American household has access to a quarter million in liquid assets, but let's be real here. Does that sound like your reality? For most of us, it doesn't. Think about it. If this wealth is so widespread, why are so many of us struggling just to make ends meet? The truth is, this figure is skewed by the wealthiest in our society. It's like saying, everyone at the dinner table is well-fed because one person has a feast while others are picking at crumbs. The vast majority of us aren't seeing this supposed wealth. In fact, Many are drowning in debt, living paycheck to paycheck. And let's talk about the student loan crisis. It's a ticking time bomb. After a three-year pause, federal student loan payments resumed. But guess what? Nearly half of the borrowers couldn't make their payments. What does that tell you about the state of our financial health as a nation? It's not just a few people struggling here and there. It's a widespread issue affecting millions. Now consider the housing market. Homeownership, once a cornerstone of the American dream, is slipping away from many. It's not just about the high prices. It's also about the interest rates. Even if the housing prices drop, as we've seen in some places like Germany, the high interest rates are still a barrier for most. This isn't just a problem for the young or the poor. It's a middle-class crisis, too. And then there's the credit card debt. More people are falling behind on their payments. This isn't about reckless spending. It's about survival. When the cost of living outpaces income growth, what choice do people have but to rely on credit cards for basic needs? So, when you hear about this great wealth that Americans supposedly have, ask yourself, who are they talking about? Because it certainly doesn't reflect the reality of millions of us who are trying to make it through each month without sinking further into debt. The narrative of widespread American wealth is not just misleading, it's harmful. It paints a picture of prosperity that masks the real struggles of everyday people. It's time we face the truth and start talking about the real state of our economy. 4. Auto loan crisis. Drowning in debt. It's a situation that's hitting many of you right where it hurts. Your finances. Have you heard about the skyrocketing delinquency rates? It's a clear sign that Americans are struggling more than ever with their car payments. But it's not just about missing payments. There's a deeper problem brewing. Consider this. Vehicle values are plummeting. In recent times, the average car has lost a staggering $6,000 in value. Can you believe that? It's a significant hit, especially when you think about how much you initially paid for your car. And let's not forget the role of interest rates in this crisis. 
They're climbing, making the burden of these loans even heavier. Now, let's delve into some alarming statistics. In November, the average person with negative equity in their car was underwater by about $6,000. That's the most significant gap since April 2020 and well above the 2020 averages, as reported by the automotive information firm Edmonds. This isn't just a number, it's a reflection of the financial strain many are facing. But there's more. Have you noticed the increasing number of cars being repossessed? It's a direct consequence of this financial strain. People are losing their vehicles because they simply can't keep up with the payments. It's a cycle that's hard to break. You need a car to get to work, but you can't afford the car because of the work you have. It's a catch-22 situation that's becoming all too common. And let's talk about homes. If this is happening with cars, what about home equity? Many are barely scraping by trying to pay the bills. It's a precarious situation and one that demands our attention. So, what does this mean for you and your financial health? Are you one of the many Americans caught in this auto loan crisis? It's a critical time to take a hard look at your finances and make some tough decisions. The market is unforgiving right now, and it's essential to stay informed and prepared. This crisis isn't just a statistic. It's a reality that's affecting millions of Americans every day. 5. Real estate market in freefall crisis deepens. It's not just a small blip on the radar. We're looking at what could be the most significant real estate correction in our lifetimes. Think about it. When someone like Grant Cardone, a seasoned private equity fund manager, points out that we're entering this massive correction, it's time to sit up and take notice. Cardone has been in the game for a long time, and his experience speaks volumes. He's seen the ups and downs, and if he's saying this is big, then we need to be prepared. But what does this mean for you and me? The regular folks. There's a silver lining here. This correction could be a rare chance for individuals to get their hands on what Cardone calls trophy real estate. This kind of opportunity to buy premium property from institutions doesn't come around often. However, it's not all smooth sailing. The market is volatile, and navigating these waters will require caution and savvy. Let's look at the broader picture. Major players like Lenner are trying to offload a staggering $4.5 billion in real estate. That's a huge amount, and it signals a significant shift in the market. Deal volumes are down and interest rates are up. This isn't just a minor adjustment, it's a major market movement. And it's not just Lenner. Companies like BlackRock are also in the mix, ready to capitalize on these changes. They're sitting on massive funds, we're talking trillions here and they're just waiting to swoop in. Now think about what this means for the market and for us as individuals. When big players start moving like this, it shakes things up for everyone. It's not just about buying and selling property. It's about the health of the entire real estate sector and its impact on the economy. This kind of correction can have ripple effects on jobs, on communities, on the financial stability of families across the country. So what's our move here? How do we navigate this shifting landscape? It's a tricky question. On one hand, there are potential opportunities to grab some valuable real estate. On the other hand, the risks are significant. Jumping in without a clear strategy could be disastrous. We need to be informed, cautious, and ready to adapt to these rapid changes. And let's not forget, this isn't happening in a vacuum. The real estate market is deeply intertwined with other economic factors, like the auto loan crisis I mentioned earlier. People are already struggling with debt and financial instability. Adding a volatile real estate market into the mix could exacerbate these issues. 6. Layoffs and consumer debt. You've seen the news. You've felt the pinch in your own wallets. It's not just a few isolated incidents. It's a trend that's becoming increasingly worrying. Think about it. Major companies that we've always seen as the backbone of our economy are starting to lay off workers in droves. This isn't just happening in small businesses or in certain sectors. It's spreading across the board. Let's look at the facts. This year alone, we've seen significant layoffs, and the projections for 2024 are even more concerning. Why is this happening? It's a mix of factors. A slowing economy, rising operational costs, and yes, the overwhelming burden of debt. When big names like UPS and FedEx start laying off thousands, especially during what should be their busiest season, it's a glaring red flag. These aren't just numbers on a page. These are people's livelihoods we're talking about. Families are going into the holiday season not knowing if they'll have a job to return to in the new year. 
And then there's the issue of consumer debt. It's a topic that's been whispered about for a while, but now it's shouting for our attention. Influential figures like Elon Musk and Michael Burry have been warning us, and it seems their predictions are coming true. Americans are drowning in credit card debt. We're not talking about a few hundred dollars here and there. We're talking about a national crisis level of debt. The economy is starting to feel the strain of this massive financial burden. But perhaps the most telling sign of the times is how Americans are coping with this financial strain. It's no longer about cutting back on luxuries. It's about survival. People are pulling money out of their retirement funds just to pay their bills. This is money that was meant to secure their future. And now it's being used to cover today's expenses. What does that say about the state of our economy? What does it say about the future we're heading into? The layoffs occurred right before Christmas, a period traditionally known for corporate ramp-ups, not cutbacks. Yet major players like UPS and FedEx proceeded to reduce their workforce. This development was not only detrimental for the affected employees, but also served as a worrying sign of the potential direction of our economy. So, what's the takeaway from all this? It's clear that we're not just facing a temporary downturn or a minor bump in the road. This is a serious, deep-rooted issue that's affecting every aspect of our economy. From the job market to consumer debt, from big corporations to individual households, the warning signs are there and they're flashing red. America, this is a wake-up call. 7. Imminent Conflict Risk Have you been following what's happening on the global stage? It's not just about our economy anymore. The world is sitting on a powder keg of tension, and it's not just hyperbole. The United Nations, invoking Article 99, is sounding alarms over the Middle East. This isn't a routine diplomatic gesture. It's a rare and serious move indicating that things are escalating quickly. But why should this concern you, sitting at home in the U.S.? Because what happens there doesn't stay there. We're interconnected in this globalized world more than we ever were. Think about it. Conflicts in one region can disrupt our supply chains, affect oil prices, and even impact our national security. Now let's talk about the expert opinions. Andrew Bakovich, a seasoned strategist, is saying we might already be in the early stages of a global conflict. This isn't just a theoretical discussion in some academic paper. It's a real possibility that could change our lives dramatically. Remember how World War II started? It wasn't acknowledged until months into the conflict. Are we seeing a repeat of history? And it's not just about one region. We're seeing emergency meetings across various countries, including the UK, discussing the implications of these conflicts. This level of international concern is a clear indicator that we're not dealing with ordinary diplomatic spats. So what does this mean for us? It means we need to be prepared for anything. The world is more volatile than it has been in decades. Economic instability at home could be exacerbated by international conflicts. This could mean more than just higher prices at the pump or disruptions in receiving goods. It could mean a significant shift in our way of life. But here's the crucial part. We can't afford to be passive observers. Staying informed, understanding the implications of these global events, and being prepared are key. We need to ask ourselves, are we ready for what's coming? Are our leaders taking the right steps to protect our interests both at home and abroad? Eight. The changing landscape of adulthood and employment. We're witnessing a profound shift in what adulthood and employment look like. It's not just about job titles and paychecks anymore. It's about the very essence of our work culture and societal expectations. Have you noticed how the lines between adolescence and adulthood are blurring? Take the case of McDonald's introducing adult Happy Meals. This might seem like a quirky marketing strategy, but it's a telling sign of the times. It reflects a deeper cultural trend where traditional milestones of adulthood are being redefined or delayed. Now consider the story of a recent college graduate who became an internet sensation due to her emotional reaction to her first 9-to-5 job and subsequent layoff. This young woman's experience is more than just a viral moment. It's a snapshot of the challenges facing our younger generation. After spending months job hunting, she finally landed a position, only to be laid off shortly after. Her story resonates with many young adults today. They're entering a workforce that's vastly different from what previous generations encountered. But what does this mean for our economy and society? Think about it. This graduate's struggle isn't unique. She represents thousands of young Americans grappling with the realities of the modern job market. The traditional 9-to-5 job is evolving, 
and not always in ways that benefit the workforce. Young adults are finding that their expectations of the working world, perhaps shaped by years of education and promises of a bright future, are clashing with reality. And let's talk about the impact of inflation and the cost of living. When the government printed excessive amounts of money back in 2020, it set off a chain reaction. We're feeling the effects now, with inflation hitting us hard. This isn't just an economic term. It's about your paycheck not stretching as far as it used to. It's about young adults, like the college graduate in our story, who are finding it increasingly difficult to make ends meet, even when they do land a job. So what's the solution here? It's not as simple as raising the minimum wage or creating more jobs. We need to address the root causes of these issues. We need to look at how our economy is structured, how education prepares young adults for the workforce, and how we can create a job market that's adaptable yet stable. This isn't just a phase or a temporary glitch. It's a significant shift in our societal fabric. The way we work, the way we view adulthood, and the way we prepare our youth for the future are all changing. And these changes are happening now, not in some distant future. We need to pay attention, adapt, and perhaps most importantly, rethink our approach to work and adulthood in the 21st century. The future of our economy and the well-being of the next generation depend on it. 9. California's Exodus and Its Consequences The situation unfolding in California is not just a local issue. It's a warning signal to the entire nation. Californians, especially the wealthy who are significant contributors to the state's tax base, are leaving in droves. But why is this happening? And what does it mean for the rest of us? Let's look at the numbers. In 2023, California saw its population decrease by tens of thousands. This isn't just about people seeking better weather or lifestyle changes. Among those leaving are some of the wealthiest Californians. These individuals aren't just a few high-profile names. They represent a sizable portion of the state's tax revenue. When they leave, they take their businesses, their investments, and their tax dollars with them. Now you might wonder, what's driving this exodus? It's a combination of factors, but high taxes and inflation are at the forefront. California has some of the highest tax rates in the country, and when coupled with rising inflation, the financial burden becomes too heavy for many. It's not just about the wealthy feeling pinched. These economic conditions affect businesses' ability to operate profitably, leading to job losses and a weakened economy. Consider this. In 2020 and 2021, California saw a net loss of about 158,000 people, according to IRS migration data. That's a significant number, and it's not just about population figures. It's about the economic impact. The state's budget relies heavily on income taxes, and when high earners leave, the revenue shortfall can be substantial. This isn't just a California problem. If other states follow similar paths with high taxes and regulations, could we see this pattern repeat elsewhere? The proposed solution in California to tax people even after they leave the state is like trying to close the barn door after the horse has bolted. It's a desperate move and one that could set a concerning precedent. What message does this send to businesses and entrepreneurs? It's a climate of uncertainty and hostility towards wealth creation. But let's not forget the broader implications. California's situation is a microcosm of a larger economic trend. When states become unattractive to businesses and high earners, the consequences are felt by everyone. Jobs are lost, economic growth stalls, and the tax burden shifts to the remaining residents. It's a downward spiral that can be hard to reverse. So what does this mean for the rest of us? It's a wake-up call. Economic policies have real-world consequences. They can either foster growth and prosperity or lead to decline and exodus. As we watch California grapple with these challenges, it's crucial to learn from their experience. How can our states balance the need for revenue with the need to create a thriving economic environment? How do we ensure that our policies attract rather than repel the very people who drive economic growth? The situation in California is more than a state issue. It's a national concern. It's a reminder that economic policies have far-reaching impacts and that the decisions made today will shape our economic landscape for years to come. 10. Elite preparations for a major event. As we navigate these turbulent times, it's hard not to notice a striking pattern emerging among the elite, including celebrities and tech giants like Mark Zuckerberg. 
Their actions are painting a picture that's hard to ignore. Zuckerberg himself is reportedly investing a staggering $250 million in a Hawaii compound, complete with an escape hatch, secret doors, and an underground bunker. But why? What does he know that we don't? This isn't just about luxury, it's about security and survival. And he's not alone in this. Other high-profile figures like Ronda Rousey, Post Malone, and even Kanye West are also reportedly building their own underground facilities. This trend among the wealthy and famous is alarming. When those with access to the best information and resources are preparing for the worst, it's a signal that we should pay attention. What's driving this sudden interest in bunkers and secure compounds? Is it just a fad, or do they anticipate something we're not fully aware of yet? Moreover, the media is mirroring these sentiments. Recently, Netflix released a movie titled Leave the World Behind, coinciding with the time these stories about bunkers started surfacing. This isn't just entertainment, it's a reflection of the current mood, a barometer of public sentiment. The movie paints a picture of societal breakdown and the need for survival against unknown threats. And it's not the only one. Another upcoming movie portrays a divided America, a nation split into two, suggesting a future of unrest and division. These aren't just random occurrences. They're part of a broader narrative that's unfolding right before our eyes. The question we need to ask ourselves is, are we prepared for what might be coming? The economic indicators are already flashing red. We're seeing layoffs across major industries, from tech to banking to shipping. Google, a tech giant, is facing its biggest layoff in 25 years. Citibank is on the verge of laying off 24,000 employees. The shipping industry is in turmoil, with companies like Maersk cutting thousands of jobs and halting operations in critical areas like the Red Sea due to geopolitical tensions. And it's not just the job market. The financial strain on American households is intensifying. Reports indicate that 40% of student loan borrowers missed their first payment since 2020. Credit card and auto loan delinquencies are on the rise. An alarming 50 million American households are struggling to afford basic living expenses. These aren't just numbers. They're signs of a deepening crisis. The banking sector isn't immune either. The Federal Reserve's tightening cycle, the most aggressive in decades, is a response to the massive monetary expansion in 2020. But this could backfire, leading to increased financial strain on banks and borrowers. Institutions like Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank are already showing signs of distress. If this trend continues, we could be looking at a banking crisis in early 2024. Thank you for watching.